Hey guys! In my last video, I made steel and titanium handles. Some people have asked me about making aluminum handles. My fear was that the pins would wear out the aluminum too quickly. I had only thought about using regular 6061 aluminum, but Lucas from Squid Industries thought I should give at least 7075 aluminum a try, which is much stronger. I could only find one inch wide stock, so I had to do the first stop in the vise. I bias it to one side so I can reach the pit bulls with an allen wrench in the next stop. Titanium is still my priority, but it'll be interesting to compare with the aluminum. The last time I made a metal prototype, I came up with the idea for interchangeable scales. But I never actually made the scales. That's what I want to do in this video. But first, I have to make what I'm calling the scale clamps again. Originally, I had planned on making nicer fixtures I could use for a while, but my last video made me realize I'm going to want to have blanks of the parts water jet cut. And I think, despite the higher material cost, I should try to do everything with thicker stock in only two operations. But I'm not sure if I can do this for every part. I gained confidence in how little material I could hold with pit bulls in my last video, but I'm still worried it'll be hard to hold on to the scale clamps for the second of the two operations. So I designed a tiny fixture to try it out first. I start by machining most of the part in the vise. I have been using steel to make prototypes and test programs before the titanium, and I think steel is good for parts under more stress, but for parts like this I definitely can use aluminum. I cut a dovetail, which is what keeps the scales in the handles. Unlike my last design, I now have to machine a curved surface onto the part. This is another thing that has me worried about fixturing this part. I did make a small flat on the top, but that goes away with the different textures I want to mill into these parts. I made raised sections on the fixture to use the counterbores as a consistent Z height. Last time, I made these parts before the handles. That allowed me to get the scale clamps to just the right size, and then make them fit perfectly in the handles. This time, I did it backwards. But with some adjustment, it fits. It's a little more awkward this way. I can then make a fixture to match the same size. I have to use a sixteenth of an inch end mill to fit between the walls and the bosses. I'm used to fixtures starting off too tight, but unfortunately I removed enough extra material getting the clamp to fit the handle that it's already a little loose in the fixture. I should have made these before the handles again. But the pit bull can still hold it. It doesn't have to be perfectly aligned for removing the extra material. I tried to align it as close as I could for the deburring though. Good. It fits. I made enough for the other non-titanium handles I have. Which means now it's titanium time. And it all went well, even the knurled texture part. I've gotten better at machining titanium, but now I need to learn how to machine the materials I want to make the scales out of. I ordered a bunch of material to mess around with. Unfortunately, they all look kind of the same. Here's some carbon fiber, which is something I hope to use eventually. Most of this is micarta, which is similar in that it's cloth embedded in resin. I thought micarta might be easier and cheaper to machine for testing than carbon fiber. I think this is G10. G10 uses glass fiber cloth, so it's kind of in between carbon fiber and micarta. I heard it can wear out tools fast, so I don't want to use it right away either, but it would still be a good choice for handle scales. I chose different cloth types of micarta, but I don't know if you'll be able to tell them apart. I should have got different colors. I wanted to try making the scales in a single operation. I made a simple fixture. I designed it to use pit bulls, 
because I didn't want an additional operation of drilling holes, and I didn't want to make some kind of custom clamp myself either. I think this was a bit of a mistake. I could tell the pit bulls weren't holding very well and were delaminating the bottom layers of material. But I realized I could raise the pit bulls up with washers and grab closer to the center of the stock. This felt much better, so I decided to give it a try. Because I'm trying to do these in a single operation, I'm starting with the surfacing first instead of last. I thought I'd try using the same toolpath I used for the scale clamps. I'm also being a little ambitious in trying to fit three scales per blank. Next, I can cut out the profile. It ramps down, but does little hops to leave tabs holding the material together. Uh oh, it's getting unstable. Uh... I admit this setup isn't great, but I think what broke the end mill is me breaking through to the aluminum. I thought I could handle the shallow cut, but I was still probably going a little too fast. I cleaned up the floor so I could try again without breaking through. The neural texture didn't really work in the micarta. So next I switched to a quarter inch ball and programmed it to just follow the smooth shape. For the outside contours, I switched it to two passes instead of a ramp. I do one full pass on all three, but leave some material to keep it held together. Then I do a final pass where I go to the bottom of the part, but leave tabs. There's one final step, using a tapered end mill to create the surface that is held in by the dovetails. The tabs weren't too hard to cut with scissors. Then I can easily file down the extra material. I had the same problem as before. The scales are too large for the slots. At least with these it's pretty quick to sand it smaller. I think it's starting to look pretty cool. I made a measurement of how wide it was when it fit, so I could try to adjust the machine to match. But I still didn't like how much the material was flexing, so I decided to switch to doing two blanks instead of three. This seemed more stable. I decided to try the G10, but once again I'm dealing with stock that isn't square. So I had to shim the stock and hope for the best. The G10 seemed to machine better. It seems to stick together more instead of fraying like the micarta. This one has layers of black and blue on the inside. And it was still fairly easy to cut the tabs. And I could sand the extra material flush. I was hoping to get a more interesting pattern with the blue layers, but it still looks kind of cool I guess. The next one, I tried milling the decorative slots option I came up with. These are just black G10, but I realized I should have done the color layered ones this way so you can see more of the colors. I did do an orange blank like this. It looks alright. I also got some interesting resin material to try. The cusps from the ball end mill were more obvious on the resin, so I ran it again with closer step overs. Uh, okay. The upward force from the flutes of the end mill was enough to pull it out of the fixture. Maybe it'd be worth trying an end mill with a down spiral instead of an up spiral. But I think I should just come back to the scales with a better setup. 
either drill holes and screw down the blanks or get thicker stock and do it in two operations. I'm not sure yet, but I do want to do at least carbon fiber and stabilized wood eventually. What kind of scales do you guys think would look best? I also made handle spacers and buttons again. I made them pretty much the same way I did before. Drill some holes, make a fixture, again just keeping it simple and quick until I do water jet. This time I made sure to leave room for the lollipop end mill ahead of time. After a few in aluminum, I made some titanium ones too. And the buttons were done with a similar technique. I make a matching knurled pattern like the scale clamps. I decided to simplify things and get a 364 inch full radius cutter. And I did the same thing in titanium. I said I'd do anodizing in my last video, and so now that I have all the titanium parts, I think I should. Once again, I dipped the parts in multi-edge acid for a few seconds. Then I rinse the acid off in water. Then I can put them in the electrolyte bath and attach the positive side to the parts. I think I did 25 volts for the handles and 12 volts for the small parts. Here's how the handles look assembled. I'm making these extra steel and aluminum scissor parts so I can make some to test the button click strengths without having to take everything apart. In my next video, I'll make the blades, do some tests, and talk about what's left to figure out before I can sell them. I think I'm getting pretty close, but I might need some help. So, like, comment and subscribe and I hope I'll see you soon. Bye.